Hello to another homemade video, this time about security of Enterprise Architect and what you have to think about if you start with user security. In my scenario, I have an Azure uh, server installed with Enterprise Architect on it. I have already transferred the EA example to uh, Firebird just because I want to have a database that we can use later on with ProCloud Server. And uh, the most important thing, if you start with configuring uh, user security, is that you enable the security. This is a secret key that is only available for um, registered users. And um, because it's a secret, I already typed in this security key. What you get is afterwards another project. I will just open it. I name it user security project where you if you open the repository are asked what are what the, creden the credentials you have for enterprise architects are and the default credentials are admin and password so it's really recommended to change it as soon as possible and sparks trusts that you are um, convenient about security rules and and so that you know what you're doing and therefore um, they are not restricting anything, making complex scenarios because enterprise architect administrators are not only modelers, they are convenient without security challenges. Um, as soon as you have activated this user security, you are able to lock uh, by package control. You can lock a package uh, to you as a user and you can also decide what you want to do. But this is not the major topic I want to address in this session. I want to address how you can configure a user security that is bound to the Active Directory or Windows authentication system behind. Um, if you start creating um, user groups and users, you should make a plan, of course. In this session, I have no real plan, but I plan to make three users and one group or two groups. Um, and uh, I will show how this is done. Um, if you go to groups, then you define your own security group. And you can see um, you have to define the user security group first. So I name it Sparks Group 1. And uh, then you have to give a description, Group 1. And then you can save it. The next step is after you have saved the group, it's possible to link this group to an Active Directory group too. So if I activate it, um, then we have to accept that Windows authentication is allowed for, uh, for authentication of users. And then I get a pop-up window that you know from Windows where you can choose for um, your users. So I can say, okay, in this case, I have only a local uh, definition. I can find a maybe existing group. Um, and you see, I have no existing group so far in this environment. So what I have to do before I can uh, bind to a group is that I have to go to the Windows management. So it's called computer management. And there you have the configuration of the Windows users and groups. And if you have Active Directory, it's working the same. So what I can do here is I can define my own group. Uh, my group name is Sparks Group um, at Windows, just to make a difference between one and two. And I say, okay, create this group. So I have now a Sparks Windows group here. And then I can also use this Sparks Windows group if I search for it. Um, and you can see, okay, without Active Directory activated, this combination will not work. So it's not working with local groups and directories. It's only working if you have Active Directory activated. So what I have to do if I don't have Active Directory activated, I will have to install Active Directory. It's not that rocket science because you can just say this server is also an Active Directory server. And I want to have um, this LDAP, Active Directory LDAP functionality. 
I want to have this rights management service. Federation is not necessary, but we will need the domain service too. So this will take a while. So hopefully I have not to restart the server, but it could happen that I have to restart the server after this process. So this is really taking a while because a lot of things are installed, as you can see here that are required for Active Directory activation on this specific server. But in the meanwhile, um, we can show and go into the permissions that Enterprise Architect provides. The default permission set is on feature base. So you have permissions for groups and you have permission for users, but the set of permissions is always the same. So you have permission to run scripts, to edit scripts, to configure project prerequisites, to manage the calendar and so on. So there are a lot of um, maybe very important permissions you can set and unset to verify and, uh, and, and making uh, interaction with Enterprise Architect. If you have ProCloud, the professional version of ProCloud at the end, so uh, then it's possible to have also role level security functionality um, I will make an extra session about this. This is a very powerful feature to even hide information in the project browser. Uh, but this means you need SQL Server above 2016 or Oracle above, I think, version 9. I'm not that sure with Oracle, but you need the function of the database that is able to activate this role level security. So I close this user uh, group administration. The second is the user administration. And uh, you have within the user administration, I will have um, Peter, uh, that's me. I save me myself. Um, then I, after I have saved the name, I can change a password. If you have decided to use exact, except window, Windows authentication, then it's automatically comparing the login name with the current registered or act, uh, re current um, uh, logged in user of Windows. So if you are in a domain scenario, then you have to post uh, type in the domain here as an example, uh, that one, um, a domain here, and this must be the exact username and domain that is used for um, login into Windows. So this is a very important feature. Then if except Windows authentication is activated, Enterprise Architect will only compare if this combination fits to a user in the user list, and then um, you don't have to reassign in into Enterprise Architect. This is not very not that 100% secure because it's just a comparison of strings. So if you try to hack a system, it is very important that you have in the middle, from my perspective, things like the ProCloud server with Internet Information Server or Apache uh, Windows authentication activated. That means that you are 100% secure that you can register to the repository only if you are a trusted user and then it's of course okay to have the single sign and on option activated. So in my case, I just stay with Peter um, and I am also able to import the user list uh, from, from, um, from an existing uh, group as an example. Um, so I can ha have this input functionality and I can say, okay, I want to add. And here we have the possibility to import the users from an active directory. In this case, it's also possible to import local users. So only the group functionality is bound to active directory uh, server available. For users, it's okay to have it 
them also only in the local environment. But maybe it's not true because it's already installed. This is also possible. So that Active Directory is already available. Um, okay, then this case, maybe it's not true, but we have seen that this uh, shows up already. So with, with the users of this server. The second thing is you can add a user to a specific user group. So we have predefined the group of the Sparks group. And that means that the user permissions are derived in the beginning of Sparks group. As an administrator, you have all rights. So if you can also be part of more groups and then the combination of user permissions are, um, so I will give Windows what it's asking for. Um, and then it will combine the user permission of both groups. So now I have combination of Sparks group permissions and administrator permissions. Um, I will make another group to show this up a, a little bit more in detail. So I close the user configuration. Uh, yes, continue. Okay, some updates happening in the background. So I go back to, don't ask for that. Um, I go back to my enterprise architect. Okay, whatever. It decided not to be open anymore. Okay, I open, I reopen the project um, user security. So once again, I enter as administrator because as P Libre, I have no rights anymore uh, to configure something like users. Um, so now I go back to configure. And here we have been within users. And uh, once again, uh, you see, okay, Peter Lieber is not at access, uh, not bound to any group because this is a tricky thing sometimes that if you close, it's not automatically stored. So I say P Lieber has the rights of Sparks group and then I have to save here. Um, so now I close. I go back to groups and I will define another group. So in Enterprise Architect, it's more or less better to start with new. And then I define another group. It's Sparks Group 2. Uh, you give them a name. It's Group 2. And you save it. And now I'm going to say in Group 1, you have the right to run scripts. You have the right to manage the glossary. That's all. Then I say save. I go to Group 2. And you say, okay, run, you are allowed to have run scripts, to edit scripts, to configure, and so on, whatever I want that he is allowed to do. And I say save. Um, what I can do now, because we have activated Active Directory now, I can say link this group to Active Directory. And now we can say which groups are there. At the moment, there are none because Active Directory groups are not existing. So here, on the server side. Okay, maybe it's just asking for another. Uh, Active Director is asking for attendance. So we have to do some configuration for this Active Directory stuff. So if you want to do some configuration is required, promote the server to a domain controller. I want to have a new forest. Um, I think it's SFR01. 
Uh, maybe I have to say it or to something. You see, I'm not doing very often active server, <laughs> active directory configuration. Uh, forest level, that's fine. I'll make it secure. So, NetBIOS name is not important. So, fine. Okay, fine. As you can see, um, that the main controller we reboot afterwards. Um, yes, I accept it. Um, so in the middle of uh, in the middle of the installation, somehow the session will go down. So once again, um, now we have seen that we have different user rights for different groups, and uh, if I go back to my users and I see I want to have this one and you see you have a derived right by a group. Of course, you can set your own right, like this user is also additionally to, to his group rights allowed to configure version control. And you see that this color, this gray thing behind and additionally, he has also the rights of user group two. So you see, that you have at the end a combination of both if you update it. So um, this is an important thing you should know. Yeah, if he has the right, yes, if he has not the right and so on. And now I say, because nothing has changed from his perspective, but I can say save again. And now we have um, the combination of Sparks group one and Sparks group two and one user-specific authentication. Um, this Windows authentication has nothing to do with the Active Directory um, registration. So if I write here, my user in this Windows environment is plibr without any domain at the moment. And I, if I um, start Enterprise Architect in the future, he will auto log on me because um, because of um, this name in the login. Just make a verification. So if I open the project, the same again, he will not ask me for user credentials because I am already in this Windows environment registered as PLIBA. And if you don't trust me, I close Enterprise Architect and I reopen Enterprise Architect. And if I open this repository with user security activated, then it will take automatically Pleba, that's my shortcut, my registered user for accessing Windows. And now I'm the user Pleba. I can verify because as Pleba, I have no rights to change users and groups. Um, and I can say, okay, I want to change my avatar and I want to manage my logs, but I'm now red and, and restricted user. So if you want to change it, then you can log in as a different one. And then it's again, uh, the administrator and I have now different rights. So this tech except Windows authentication just verifies if the login in the Windows environment is the same name as, as in this um, machine. Um, I just create some other users. And if you don't change the password, it there is no password. So also very important to know 
um, that if you change the pass don't, don't change the password, it's like in a Linux environment from the logic point of view. So then I have here some additional one. Just defining some names. Create a new one. And so on. Okay, so we have now some users with uh, different rights. Um, at the moment, only Pili, Peter Liebe is having rights, Sonia has no rights, Neelix has no rights, and Gina has no rights. So if I turn uh, Sonia to administrators, then she has all rights. I have to save it. And uh, then I close. And if I want to change my user, log in as another user, then you type in here Sonia no password because I have not defined the password uh, right taking it in the right uh, so uppercase is very important but you have defined no password so it's not uh, giving you a strict you have to have a password the funny story is you can set any password here so I make the most secure password of the world Um, and because this is my Windows logon, um, you are even not asked for this password, except if you want to log in as another user uh, and I want to become myself, I have to type in the password um, that is uh, given by Enterprise Architect. But if I come again using my Windows credentials and the Windows credentials are accepted, then I don't have to think about uh, my password anymore or maybe I've started it two times let's see how fast how far my installation is still installing we know at the end it will close my session um, then the funny story is that we, I'm not asked for the password and the password of enterprise architect has nothing to do with my Windows password just to let you know this is two different areas enterprise architect authentication and there the definition of what he is allowed and um, and the definition of windows there is a third area you have to think about because if you have a database in the background then the database user has also nothing to do with an enterprise architect user or a Windows user. It could be because it's a matter of configuration, but uh, you must be very careful with that. So I think it makes a lot of sense to make a break here and I will follow up with this Active Directory uh, authentication as soon as Active Directory is installed on this machine. Bye-bye.